Andy, lots of different theories about how the mind works. Um, one of the more popular ones in, in recent decades is the computational theory of mind as computers have become more and more uh, prevalent in, in, in the world. Uh, many people would critique that, that uh, it, the, although the brain transmits electrical impulses, there's a very distinct difference between what's happening in computation today, even parallel or complicated computational algorithms and how the brain works. So you've been working in this for your career. How do you analyze computational theory of mind? Yeah, it's a very big bucket somehow, computational theory of mind. Um, I think it's one of those phrases where often people hear it and the thing that they immediately think of is something like um, symbolic computation being done with a sort of old-fashioned digital computer of, of some kind. Um, I think we've got good reason to think that brains aren't doing that. They're not, they're not computing over um, strings of language-like mm -hmm. symbols, and they're not using um, operations which are as uh, neat and tidy as the ones that we've enforced upon standard computational platforms. At the same time, the broader notion of a computational account of cognition covers all sorts of forms of encoding, distributed encodings from artificial neural networks, um, probabilistic encodings of the kind that I'd be probably most interested in right now, analog encodings, or at least the use of analog components. I guess even, even good old-fashioned digital computers are made of analog components, so it's about what's enforced on top of them. Uh, and within that larger framework, I think that uh, actually, actually I am a computationalist. So I, I, I think the question isn't, is the brain a computer, but what kind of computer is a brain? And it's a, it's a very special sort of computer solving very special kinds of problems. It's a probabilistic machine, and what it does is deeply entwined with moving the body around so as to simplify the problems that it's trying to solve. This is pretty different to our picture of a sort of original picture of a big mainframe sat in the corner mm -hmm. doing its stuff. Um, I think those are the important differences, though, not in whether it's a computer or not, but just what's it doing and how's it doing it. So you're using the c concept of computational theory in mind in a very, very broad sense, because yeah. what's, what kind of computation is dramatically different. Yeah. So yeah. if you classify yourself as a computational theory of mi theorist mm -hmm. of mind, um, how then would you define that which works, because you've already said mm -hmm. the traditional computer way of reading mm -hmm. zeros and ones in some mm -hmm. machine language is not the way it, it works? Well, it could be yeah. zeros and ones. You know, I, I think at the bottom level, it could, if sure, you wanted, sure. it could be zeros and ones. It, it's just a question of, if you like, what are the interesting program level descriptions that are being implemented by that underlying structure. And I think once we start to think that the, the descriptions at the levels that will matter for the sciences of the mind are descriptions in terms of something like multi-level probabilistic encodings with distributed representation, so it's not like a little symbol for a concept uh -huh. like cat, but instead it's a widespread pattern of activity that can be more or less there, doesn't have to be kind of all or nothing. Once you start to think in those terms, then you're beginning to look at this sort of very small corner of the class of possible computational mechanisms where I think we, we humans and biological animals in general live. Um, so if you think about some of the things we do, like we like to offload stuff and look at it. We don't see, most of our computers don't do that. You know, they don't want to print something out and have a look at it and think about it some more. What good's that gonna do them? Um, so somehow we have to understand that special corner of computational space in which you get real boosts from printing stuff out, if you like, and looking at it. And so this, uh, th this combines your work in, in the brain as a predictive uh, uh, yeah. mechanism with uh, the um, um, extended mind. Uh, and so you bring these together into to sort of a new kind of computational theory of mind? I guess that's right in a way, although I, th I see that theory out there. Um, some of the, the recent work in the sort of deep mind nexus yeah. has started to use what they call dynamic, I think they call it dynamic external memory. Anyway, the yeah. idea is that their systems learn not just to solve the problems using their inner resources, but learn how to use some external resource like a subway map 
to solve mm. problems so that then they can learn knowledge that they can apply to a different kind of subway map in Paris or in Tokyo or somewhere like that. Mm. Um, so I think the fact that even stuff like DeepMind is being driven to explore the role of the, the environment in changing the problem solving that the deep mindy bits have to do is good evidence that, um, that, that interesting bits of computational space exist there. And so if you predict f f f for the future in terms of the development of uh, 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 the um, kind of multi-layer predictive mechanisms that you believe is the core for mental activity, you know, how do you see that developing? Developing in, in computational terms? Or in yeah, and, and, and in t computational terms, but more importantly for understanding how the mind works. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose I think that what's, what, what's going to happen in the, in, in the near future is we'll begin to see the kind of heavy duty computational stuff like the deep mind work beginning to come together with much more biologically informed work from um, cognitive and computational neuroscience. So one of the places where those traditions meet, I think, is in terms of the recognizing the importance of multi-level downward prediction. So it's work going back to, to Hinton's work coming out of the connectionist paradigms and beginning to push that stuff into something more like the deep mind picture. Um, sort of the idea that that we should think about cognition as more like graphics programs than like pattern recognition programs. More like you recognize the patterns by learning how to produce them rather than simply learning how to recognize them.